Okay, the challenge in this one is pretty straightforward. I have three components, which of course we normally wouldn't just stuff all into the same file, but your job is to convert these function components into class-based components. Also, if you happen to find it, there's a small bug that we have in this program. So once you've converted all of the components to class components, see if you can also find and fix the small bug that we have. As a hint for number three, I find that it's easiest to put any kind of display logic like you see here inside the render method, but before the return statement of that method. So pause the screencast, start up here at number one and work on this challenge. Okay, well for number one, let's start by changing our function to a class. We'll say class app extends react.component. I'll remove my parentheses, and then every class component needs to have a method called render. So we'll include that, and then I will just take everything from my return and bump that up inside of the render. At each point along the way, I should be able to hit save and see everything rendering the same way as it was before. Awesome. Okay, number two is essentially the same, but this time we're using props. We'll address that in just a minute. But first, let's change our function to a class header. We get rid of our parentheses and use extends react.component. Component, of course, is with a capital C. And then we need a render method. So we'll put that in, move everything from our return inside. And now to deal with the props, we need to change props, which we were accepting as the function's parameter before to this dot props. I'll hit save. And again, we're back in a working state here. Okay, with this last one, we are going to put all of this display logic inside of our render method, but let's go ahead and make the other changes first. We'll say class greeting, get rid of our parentheses, extends react dot component. I'll create a render method, and then I will just move everything inside of my render method. As I mentioned in the hint, all of your display logic can happen inside of the render method, but before the return statement. I'll hit save, and everything is working just like before. Awesome work. Hopefully while you were doing this, you also noticed that we are missing our username here. Although we are correctly displaying this.props.username in our header component, we aren't actually passing in a username prop to our header. So we simply need to add a username prop and maybe I'll just put my own name there, and that's working just like we would expect. Hopefully this wasn't too challenging. If you struggled at all with this, it would probably be helpful to maybe change all of these class components back into function components and then maybe change them back into class components again. That kind of exercise can be really helpful to cement this information into your brain. So we have now learned how to deal with props in a class-based component. Next, we're going to learn how we can create state inside of a class component.